Hello everyone and welcome to my Road to 2000 ELO. I'm going to be doing this series for team random map games. As I find I just like doing team games a lot more. So this game was quite special. Uh, it was a mega random map which was quite nice. I like mega random because of the variety it provides. It should kind of speed things up to the dark age. And so I'm I'm in the blue. I'm playing as the Malians. Malians are only special because they get you know cheaper cheaper buildings in terms of wood. That's about it. And then my ally is down here in the gray. We have Imperial Boomer. He's playing as the Indians. And I mean he and I did not really have any conversation during this match. We were not discussing our plan or anything. We were honestly not communicating at all. And interestingly enough, we both accidentally went for a tower rush together. So, it gets interesting. So, in the red, our opponents, we have AEW playing as the Mayans, and in the yellow, we have Nuno playing as the Goths. So, interesting matchup. I mean, Goths, I can t I should be able to deal with just fine, because Molly and Gibettos can really, really cause some trouble for Huskarl, so I think this is a good matchup for me. And Mayans versus Indians, I mean, it's iffy. Eagle Warriors are probably going to be able to do a lot of damage to them unless the unless Indians can get to pretty fast Imperial Age for some cheaper villagers and get gunpowder units out. But anyway, so Dark Age is pretty standard. Nothing really happened here. I'm just going to really speed things up through here because it's just, it just doesn't get interesting until at least Feudal Age. So, our opponents got off to a pretty decent start. I mean, when I was looking at them, I... I noticed that they were taking stragglers and stuff, so I'm like, alright, they can't be too experienced here, so I'm gonna see what's going on. And, you know, I had some issues getting the feudal age. I got housed and just got weird, so my my ally went to and put five on stone and was already preparing to go for his tower rush. And he did a pretty good job of it actually. So I had no idea he was gonna do this, so he went over and started the tower rush red. And honestly, for a tower, it's not terrible, but it's not really doing much there. So I would have definitely did some, d done something different there. But up north, I went in hard and I just walled in my towers. So I don't want this guy taking him down at all. So I put one up and I'm just going to start putting up more and more towers and just keep on, keep on putting pressure on this guy. So I scouted him out early and I knew that he had... There's two golds here, but I never saw the gold in the back. So that was kind of an issue for me because I was trying to deny him gold entirely because Goths get such cheap infantry, I don't want them to have any. So just getting a little weird there, but while getting my towers was a great choice here just because I didn't want any of his men at arms to ram him down pretty quickly. So I got this set up pretty decently, and he's going to start trying to do counter towers, and I really should have been more aggressive with these. I should have gone over to the other gold. And started putting towers over there to see if I could get him off of that one and force him down here. But Yellow just went ahead and started making man at arms. And over here, I mean, my ally started getting insanely aggressive. He's, he put up another tower and he started killing a lot of villagers on this wood line, which is an excellent play for him. So, oddly enough, his towers actually started to do something, even though they were placed a little far out. He went for just straight out denying all the wood lines. And back at his base, he managed to wall in Red Scout, which was pretty good always fun to see that when that happens in the game and I started to kind of have my towers messed around with yellow I mean he he tried taking out that one I ran out of stone and couldn't quite wall that one in so I mean that one was weak but he didn't manage to go for it all the way and I just started to kind of you know keep my villagers garrison and just kind of see if I can't harass him a little bit so he, was, he handled the tower rush quite well actually he wasn't making any stupid decisions and I honestly don't understand villager pathing why he had to run all the way down here that's just honestly a stupid decision. Villager pathing is still not fixed in this game. And down here to the south, Red started to try to deal with Gray, and he honestly succeeded. I mean, these are okay tower positions, but I mean, walling in your towers definitely makes them a lot better. He should have used stone walls and just kind of really tried to buy himself some space. That would have been a much better decision. But he really started to really, really mess around with Red. I mean, this was. This got Red's resources down, and it was super effective. And he, I mean, Gray never gave up. Shout out to him. This was an absolutely phenomenal job of towering. I mean, the amount of men at arms that Red invested in and had trouble dealing with his towers, it was so, so worth it for him to do this. 
So he just kept on, kept on putting pressure on. And, I mean, Red needed to just go in, take out these palisades, and just get rid of that tower entirely. But no, all of his men at arms ended up just sitting right there. And, I mean, he took some losses, and it was great. So, Gray just started, kept, just kept on, kept on walling in his towers. And I was trying to go for more towers up here. And, I mean, you know, it was interesting because I was trying to work my way around here, and I had no vision on this tower until, you know, villagers decided to run out in front of it. So I was like, all right, can't really go for his stone or anything. So I just kind of ended up in this interesting scenario. So yellow ended up in Castle Age, and I did as well about the same time. So I started adding more economy at home. I started adding town centers. And I really should have gone for the Molly and Unique tech where your town centers will fire arrows where they're not garrisoned. But, you know, I decided to keep investing in my tower. So I put up two universities for some stupid reason because I'm still a bit of a low elo legend. And I went for guard tower and fortified wall so I could get them both out quickly. And on the front lines, I tried putting up a siege workshop to get a Manganel up and start dealing with his watchtowers, but it just didn't work out. So he took he took out that one, and he started to try to go for my towers, but I got Myrtle Holes research, and I got everything there. And he just started killing his own long swordsman with his Manganel, which is honestly just such a bad decision. I mean, if you're in this scenario, honestly, just try to let your Manganel do the work, but against guard towers, it doesn't matter what you have, Guard towers are always going to do better. I got Bodkin and everything, so these guard towers are just doing an excellent job of keeping the pressure on here. I built another one in the back just to make sure that if any long swordsmen were, I just want to make sure that there were not any long swordsmen doing too much damage. So I started adding more and more towers. I, mean, I just wanted to make sure that I had this area blocked off and I was causing him some real issues. So. I was not paying attention, and he just decides, you know what, screw your towers, I'm going to go raid your economy at home. So this is where things got a little sketchy, because I was not paying attention. So he came in and immediately went for the town center, but I just rang a town bell, and it managed to get rid of all of his long swordsmen, which was great. So his long swordsmen didn't have a lot of armor upgrades on him yet, he went for straight just attack upgrades, so they died relatively easily, and I mean honestly my scout cavalry was going to do absolutely nothing there. And looking down at what was going on down here with Gray, he went for guard towers as well, just like I did. And, he I mean, Red tried going for some sort of an archer rush here, but, I mean, Gray was smart. He towered at home because he knew that he needed to protect his resources. So that wasn't really going to be a big deal for him. And in the front lines in Red's base, I, I was not paying attention to this, but he kept going with his tower rush. So he threw a castle in Red's face, and I mean, Red was stuck. Red had no idea what to do, because when you're in this position in Feudal Age, I mean, it's almost best just to delete your TC and build up a new town center, because this is not going to work. So, Red was in a good spot, I just resigned right now. I thought Red was just going to resign, because Feudal Age, you're, you're trying to ask your buddy for help, and your buddy is dealing with me up here, and I've got guard towers all over him. So, he keeps trying to go for mangonels and long swordsmen up here, and that's not going to do a thing against guard towers. The, my guard towers have excellent range. I mean, I got ballistics for them. I got every, all the upgrades needed for them to be absolutely fantastic. So, I just tried building more and more towers forward, try to kind of get up in his face and see if he'd notice. And this one, he absolutely decided that he had to, you know, go, go forward and try to deal with that. So, I deleted it because it's not worth losing the stone. And he just yellowed and said, I'm going for your mangonels because those are causing a lot of havoc and I mean it was a smart play for him he did definitely get my mangonels out there but same time I still have so many towers here it's not doing anything to him so he has to retreat with his long swords and it's still I'm still holding fine there's nothing wrong with this so he did build a castle here and it, it started to do some decent damage at taking out my towers so at this point I'm thinking that you know it's okay that I have towers, but I need to, like, if I don't deal with this castle, things are going to get ugly. So, it's getting weird there, and Red was just in a horrible spot. He was not able to get his town center up. I mean, he was trying to repair it, but it, it does go down. And Gray was just being an absolute amazing teammate. He just put another castle up, and he kept putting the pressure on. So this was an absolutely stunningly good play by Gray. I mean, he's even teasing him taking red stone. I mean, it, he's doing such an amazing job of keeping the pressure on red. So I was thinking at this point, we have to have won this game. 
because he's got castle in his face. I've got pressure going on yellow. And I'm about to start cranking out siege units and taking out all of his stuff. So again, I go for a more forward tower to see if I can't start denying some of his farms and harass him even more. Because all I'm trying to do here is make sure that I've got plenty of pressure on yellow. And back home. I mean, things aren't looking great for my economy at home. This is honestly pretty pathetic for middle for mid-castle age. I mean, Gray's already going to Imperial Age, but one guard tower on my gold, and I never repaired my town center. I just now put my second town center up. It's not looking great. And Yellow decides that he has to help Red, which honestly in this scenario is the best play because he needs his ally if they're going to make a comeback. So he sends all of his Huskarls and Long Swordsmen forward, and all of a sudden, Gray is in a weird position. He's on his way to Imperial Age, but he has to somehow figure out a way to adjust his villagers at home so where he doesn't lose his entire economy. So, Gray gets himself into an interesting scenario, and Yellow does cause quite a bit of damage here, but again, on, on the front line here, Gray is doing an absolute phenomenal job. Two castles, bunch of towers. Taking a stone, I mean, that is an amazing job by Gray. So, Red's pushed all the way back here, and really, there's nothing great about this. I mean, he's, he's being denied his gold, his stone. He doesn't really have any resources to work with right here, so he's not in a great scenario. Now, up at Yellow, I just kept on adding towers to be more and more annoying. I did manage to get that one up. He decided not to be aggressive and take it out like he did last time. And I'm just going to keep building towers forward in his face, in his face, and make sure that he just gets stretched out by the amount of towers that I have. So, he's still got, you know, one gold he's working on down here, but I've now denied him this gold. And, luckily for me, his castle was out of range of this guard tower up here. So, I was in a good spot here. So, he's not taking that gold, he's, he can't take that gold, and that gold's going to run out eventually, and he can't really trade with his ally here. He's in a bad spot. So he decides, all right, I'm, I got to go forward and deal with these towers. And not a good choice. I have garrison villagers in there. That's going to just absolutely melt that mangano. So I'm in a great spot. I did, the only thing I really need right now is to make sure that, that tower goes down so I can actually keep putting pressure on. But all in all, this is great, great positioning for me. So I was on, I'm already on my way to Imperial Age, 86% of the way there. And things are looking great for me. This is an absolutely phenomenal match. Now, the issue is, Gray is starting to get attacked at home by Yellow, and Yellow is doing an amazing job putting pressure because there's really no defense here. Three TCs against Huskarls, I mean, it's not your greatest, it's not great. So, he needs, he needs, like, preferably if he had champions or something here to help deal with these, he'd definitely be doing a lot better. But Yellow is just going to keep reinforcing this, reinforcing this, because Yellow realizes that if he keeps attacking my tower, he's simply going to lose. So, he's just going to keep on trying to harass Gray so to make sure he can buy Red some time. So, we're in an interesting scenario here because Red is still not in the castle age yet, and he's just trying to survive. This is doing phenomenal work, keeping him off of the stone, just keeping all the resources to himself. He's doing a great job here. And I just got a little out of control here. I just decided, screw it, I'm just going to keep building towers in your face. So, I mean, I've got towers upon towers upon towers here, and he's trying to repair this one watchtower because he knows if that watchtower goes down, it's going to get ugly for him because I can start coming here and denying his stone and stuff. So, it's getting interesting, and, I mean, I've, I've upgraded these to keeps. I've got my architecture upgrades. I mean, it's looking great. So, I'm thinking, all right, there's only so much longer this game can go on because we're in a great spot right now. I'm just going to speed things up for a second, and it's just, I mean, really, nothing really changes for a while. Gray keeps doing a phenomenal job, and this is going to keep yellow, uh, sorry, red off of his other gold down here. He's going to put another castle up in his face, which is an absolutely amazing snare. And right here, Gray puts in the chat, I have to leave. And I'm like, we have this, man. Come on, you can, you can stay. We, we have this. And he tributes me all of his resources, and Gray's out. So at this point, I'm thinking, well, okay, great. So all I have to work with is he's got some pressure on Red still from his castles, and, you know, he still has some resources that I can go steal at his base. But this is all me now. So I put up some stables, and I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to go for Cavalier and try to try to see if I can, you know, do some, do some damage in here. So, I mean, I've got... Five towers, and what's soon to be six towers, ranging that TC. That's going to go down. 
So we're in a weird spot here because Red was on the brink of, I mean, being forced to resign because he was going to have nowhere to go if Gray kept putting pressure on him. But now we're in a, just an awkward spot. So I started making bombard cannons up here, which was honestly a great choice because I just wanted to make sure I could range that castle and see if I can't, you know, put some pressure on this guy to come attack me. So I want that castle out so I can go forward and keep putting towers up and just deny him everything in here. So. I think this is looking great, and he doesn't notice that I'm using a bombard cannon against his castle yet, and eventually he is going to send this group of units in to see if he can't deal with that. So I'm in a weird spot here, because all I've got really are towers, two bombard cannons, and just a few knights. That's really it. So this tower is definitely going down, no doubt about that, and I'm just tr trying to see how much time I can buy myself, because this is just a weird scenario to be in. So I add stables up front just because I'm like, all right, I need something to start pumping out some units to actually put some pressure on here because towers are not going to win me the game. And, you know, villagers being villagers, why don't you just walk in front of the castle? That's great. Great job, man. Um, so, again, trying to get cavalry up to see if I can't do something. And right away, red goes back here. Most new TC, gets himself some gold. And yellow decides he's going to come over here to the corner of the map and start really doing some good job. So, I'm thinking, okay, castle's down, that looks great, and, I mean, if you turn off the all-visible stuff, I mean, I can see everything he's doing, I see these units down here, I see all the pressures Gray, Gray still has on red, I know that he has a TC right here, so I'm thinking, alright, this is still looking pretty good for me, I don't see any units coming out of red, I mean, the score difference, I'm at 6,000, yellow's at 3,000, red's at 2,000. I mean, it's looking great for me. So he sends these forward, and I'm like, got a quick wall, got to put something there, put something there, put something there. Yes, just in time. So now all of his units are stuck in here, and these towers with ballistics, they're just absolutely going to wreck that. So this was a great play for me. I got rid of his entire army there with just my towers, and I'm quite happy about that. So he goes all the way with pikemen, and he's going to send those forward. And that's not great for me because I've just got Cavalier. So I'm thinking, all right, I'm still good here because all I need to do is garrison these villagers and, you know, TC and the castle will take those out. So I finally have massed up 25 Cavaliers and I'm thinking, all right, I just need to go in and deal with Red because I don't want him getting too strong. So you don't want anyone making a comeback. I want to make sure I secure this victory. So I garrison my villagers and those pikemen will all go down. I'll lose the Cavaliers, but it's alright. I mean, I still got plenty of resources to work with. Everything's still looking great for me. So, I go forward with Cavalier, and Red's got no response to this. He's He does not have any units. I mean, he has one man-at-arms, and against 25 Cavaliers, one man-at-arms is not going to make a difference. So, Yellow starts trying to send Pikemen over to help him, but really, this is just an absolute slaughter. So, I'm thinking, alright, this is Red's villagers. This has to be the game here. Like, this is just irreversible eco damage. I got his town center down. I'm making sure I can put a tower up to deny his resources there in case I can't constantly have units there. Bombard cannons are doing an absolutely phenomenal job. I'm pumping out units out of my stables. Everything's looking great. So my economy at home was still not phenomenal. I mean I got idols all over the place. I've got units that are just standing around. I mean it's not looking great. I needed to refresh some lumber camp and stuff but you know it's alright, but I've still got good pressure on the front. So, I mean, Red should be, Red should resign here. You're, you're really not going to come back from this. This is just, there's this is too much pressure, you're not coming back. And he keeps trying to pressure my Bombard Kings because he knows that those are going to be his biggest threat. And I've just got Cavalier all over the place. I am just trying to make sure that I keep him off everything. I'm taking out Red's buildings, and I'm thinking, alright, this is it. I've won the game. And it's just just weird, because I'm going to speed things up here. So, you know, Bombard just keep taking out buildings. I'm thinking, all right, everything's great. But the entire time, I don't know what's back here. And it turns out that they both have TCs back here. So, Yellow still thinks he can come back. He's doing a great job farming and everything, whatever. But I'm like, honestly, why would you not resign at this point? You've... There's no way. I have too many Cavaliers. This is just how this is going to go. So, I just keep pumping out Cavaliers. Keep taking out all his buildings. I mean, I'm getting all my upgrades. Everything's looking great. I put a TC forward so I get the stone. 
Just in case someone put a castle up in their face and denied them any resources. I start going for Jibetos in case he wants to go for Huskarls. So I'm thinking, this is it. I'm looking great. And I never noticed that Red went down to the bottom right hand corner and decided, you know what, I'll put up a TC here because I can still come back. And he came down here and was like, I'm putting up a TC down here too. So Red's back up to three TCs, and, but he's still not doing anything else. He doesn't have any other buildings and it's just getting sad. So I'm thinking, all right, I got to find where this guy is. And I mean, I should have kept scouting up there because I this gave you all a little bit of time. But I'm like, you guys have to be around here somewhere. So I went up to the upper... You know, left-hand corner of the map, I'm like, are you up there? Okay, so I find Red's TC down here, and there's nothing Red's going to do about this. And his villagers run, and he's just going to go all the way over and start building other stuff. And you got him down here, and he's like, all right, build house. And he sends more villagers up to the other corner to start building more TCs up there. Yellow's got one random villager out here, and he's got a TC up there north of my base, and he's got another TC up here. And I'm like, guys, you just need to resign at this point. It's getting ridiculous. So Cavaliers are still going to do absolutely phenomenal at taking out his town centers. So, again, absolute massacre of villagers for red. He's not going to survive that. At the same time while I'm finding this, I notice that yellow's right here. So I go and slaughter yellow again and get him off his gold. So I still have no idea at this point that he's down here and then he's up here and there's a, t there's a TC up here and there's one right here. So I'm still scouting around. I went out to get relics and stuff because I'm like, all right, getting a late game. I'm going to need some gold here. So at this point, I was looking at spies, and spies was 7,700 gold, and I'm like, I got to get spies here because this is just ridiculous. They're not going to resign. I'm going to have to hunt them down at the ends of the earth. So, okay, fine, whatever. And I just keep on scouting. So got this corner cleared out. Red's like, all right, finally, I'm going to boom again down here. It's looking great. And it's just getting old because I'm still slaughtering houses around. I'm still just looking all around for this guy if my ally was here i mean sometimes you do have to go it's totally fine it's not not blaming him but you know if he was still here we definitely would have already had this wrapped up but now i'm at the point where i'm like okay where is he and then i notice okay he's right there so i just tell him you're you guys are really gonna die tired this is ridiculous come on i've got this come on you guys need to resign and they still refuse let me speed things up even more here i kill off all of his villagers in this corner and I start pumping out Cavaliers up here, and I notice, hey, there's Red. So, start working on Red. I notice that he has a mining camp there. I find Red down here. I'm still all over the place. Red decides, okay, I'm going to build another town center down here, because why not? It's not worth resigning yet. Even though, you know, you can obviously come back from this scenario. Anyone can. So, just absolutely ridiculous stuff. So, I'm like, okay. From my perspective, I'm like, there's not a lot more places you can be. And my Cavaliers on their, way out, on their way down here sees this, and I'm like, oh, okay, Yellow's trying something. So I didn't, realize, I didn't think he had any units up here, so I built the castle just in case, you know, I can start denying him resources and stuff. And he went for all pikemen, which is a great play in this scenario just because I'm just full Cavaliers. So I come up here and absolutely destroy Yellow. And while I'm doing this, I'm like, all right, this has to be the last TC this guy has because I'm all over red down here. I mean, he's only got one villager up there, which I somehow missed. I did, He was trying to build a town center here. I destroyed that. And I'm like, all right, this has to be the end. But no, Red has a town center down there. And Yellow's down here. He's going to try to do, the, do another town center. So it's just getting stupid at this point. So all Red, all Red has is his town center down here. And I'm going to find that and start killing off all of his units. And he's got one pikeman there, but that's not going to do a thing for him. He tries building a defensive tower, which is a stupid choice. If he hadn't have built that tower, he might have been able to go for yet another town center, but I didn't want him to do that anyway. And I just show right back up with all of my cavaliers and start taking out all of his town centers again. So the game has to be close to done now because, well, oh wait, never mind. Yellow decides I'm building another town center because, hey, I can still come back from this. It's not worth resigning. And up here, he still has two villagers, so he I don't believe he builds another town center up there. But he's also down here in this corner. He's getting stone stuff, so he can still get himself another town center if he wanted to. 
So, just ridiculous. So I slaughtered all of Red's villagers. I mean, he's going past Gray's towers here, and that villager's going to go down. So, little do I know, yellow's down here. So, at this point, I'm thinking this is just getting stupid. So, I research spies, and I can see Red's down here on stone. Yellow's over here in the corner. And now I'm like, finally, I can end the game. So, I send my Cavaliers over to Yellow, and... I sent Jabetos up here to get that one villager that was on stone. And I sent all my cavaliers down here as well, just to see if I can't clean up his villagers. So at this point, the game has to be over. I killed the ones in the lumber camp. And I'm waiting for the town center to go down from him. And he's acting like he can run again, even though I have spies research. So the only thing left right now is these two villagers. That's it. And my cavaliers. I mean, I wasn't paying attention. I was too busy trying to get their other buildings and stuff. And they finally decided to resign. So, teammate left middle of the game. And, I mean, despite the fact that my opponents tried to rebuild 17 times and failed it every single time, it was still a fun game to play. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. So, yeah, crazy, crazy game. Um, random, decent random, decent kind of mega random map here. Not bad. I, didn't, I did not like the sparse wood lines. I thought that made it a little tricky. And just, you know, it was alright. But definitely, I just think that if you... I mean, if you lose all of your buildings like that and you're under extreme pressure, then in some cases it's worth resigning. But when the score is like 11,000 to 3,000, you're not coming back. So, anyway, that's about it for this replay. I'll just show the stats of it. So, I mean, 15,000 total score. The game took an hour and 17 minutes. It was just ridiculously long. Didn't need to be that long. And, you know, decent stats here. 279 units killed, which was great. And just, you know, great timeline for me. I just absolutely dominated. So, that's about it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Tune in for the next episode of, you know, Master Steve tries to climb the ELO ladder. So, 